Hey there everyone, this is Miss Goddard and if you're watching this video you are probably wondering a little bit about book genres. Today in class we started a little lesson on the elements of fiction and the different types of fiction that there are. And if you're watching this video you are probably watching it so it can help you complete this assignment. This assignment is something that we started in class and you are expected to finish it for homework. The title is The Five Types of Fiction and on the side we have fantasy, realistic fiction, historical fiction, science fiction, and fables. This video is going to give you a little bit of insight about what those things are and give you an example of each of them. So we're going to start with fantasy. Fantasy is a type of fiction, but it's kind of an extreme type of fiction. Fantasy is a type of story where the impossible is possible. And when I say that, fantasy is a type of story where things that are not possible in real life can happen in this fantasy world. So giving you an example, Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs is a really great story. It's also a movie, but it is an element of fantasy. It's a type of fantasy. Looking in here at the pictures, you can see that one of the picture, pictures shows food and drinks raining down from the sky, which is not possible here in real life. That is why this is a type of fantasy fiction. You can also find different elements of fantasy such as magic or mythical creatures or talking animals. All of those things are elements of fantasy. So, moving on to the next one on our list is realistic fiction. This is kind of the most difficult one that you guys will kind of come into contact. It's also one of the most common. Realistic fiction has two parts. First, the fiction part. When an author writes a fictional story, they make it up. They make it up from their brain. The characters are not real. The places don't have to be real. It's all made up from right inside the author's head. But if it is realistic fiction, that means while the story is still made up, it could actually happen. You have characters that are similar to us in real life. You have places that are similar to the places we have in real life. You have things that could actually happen in real life. You won't find any characters riding around on broomsticks or casting spells. For example, Judy Bloom has a great book called Tales of Fourth Grade Nothing. This book is realistic fiction. The story is completely made up from Judy Bloom's head. However, the characters in this story and the settings and all of the events that happen can actually happen in real life. Still, made up story, events could happen. They're very realistic. So moving on to the next topic, that is historical fiction. Historical fiction is one of my favorites, and it is really easy to recognize because historical fiction, again, like realistic fiction, has two parts. The first part is fiction. The author makes up the story, makes up the characters. But the setting and the time and usually the events that happen in a historical fiction novel have happened in the past. For example, taking a look at this book called The Titanic Sinks, the sinking of the Titanic is an actual event. It actually happened about a hundred years ago. But the characters in this story could be made up. So historical fiction usually takes place sometime and somewhere in the past. But the characters, again, are the made up part. So, Titanic Sinks is an example of historical fiction. Moving on to science fiction. Science fiction, again, is a type of fiction that has two parts. The first part, fiction, and fiction, again, can be made up from the author's head. But this time, we're giving the book a sciency swing. Let's take A Wrinkle in Time, for example. In a science fiction book, you will normally find that the setting is set in the future, sometime hundreds of years or thousands of years in the future. You will also find elements like time travel. That's, that's something that's in this book. You may find elements like aliens or robots or the use of technology. 
technology is a huge thing in science fiction. It's also kind of a version of fantasy. Science fiction, if fantasy is up here, science fiction is right underneath of it because aliens can't actually happen in real life. We don't actually have time travel in real life. So those elements are very fantasy, but they fit under their own category in science fiction because a lot of those elements are very science-y. Last but not least, we're going to move on to the fable. Fables are something that we're going to be doing a lot here in class, and fables are similar to folk tales in that they teach you a lesson about how to be a better person. At the very end of the short story, it usually is pretty short, um, at the end of the short story, there will usually be a character that tells you a lesson or a lesson that's just written right at the bottom. Uh, examples of lessons might be treat others with respect, um, it might be do to others as others might do to you. Uh, it might be a lesson like uh, be nice and you will be successful. It could be anything really. So an example of a, a fable, um, this is actually a whole book of fables. It's called Aesop's Fables. So opening up you'll find many short stories in this book. So for example, um, one that we are going to be reading in class is called The Lion and the Mouse. And um, if I could find it, I would read the lesson to you. But here's an example of a short fable right here. And down here at the very, very bottom is the lesson. This lesson is persuasion succeeds where force fails. And what that means is if you gently persuade somebody to do something instead of forcing them to do it, you're going to be more successful. So that's an example of a book of lots of fables. So we have gone through fantasy, realistic fiction, historical fiction, science fiction, and fables. With this video, you should be able to fill out just about, well, all of the questions in this little flip book of yours. You'll turn this in, and uh, we will be using this as a resource for the rest of the year. If you have any questions, feel free to email me or have your parents call me, and I hope you have a great night. See you later. Good luck.